This is Jonathan Trailer, and you're watching Gospel Goodies TV. Gospel Goodies. Gospel Goodies. This is Gospel Goodies. I am so excited to be talking with uh, Jonathan Trailer today, which a lot of people are calling him a new artist, and I don't know if it's just maybe because I've been a fan, but he's not new to me. Um, but I'm definitely excited to have you on the show today, sir. How are you? I am great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining. Um, how have you been holding up in this pandemic, political craziness, all these all these things happening in the world? Um, it's been crazy, but honestly, and I don't I don't mean to sound like a super saint and real churchy, but um, I've been clinging onto the word of God. I've been in the word of God every day. That's why I'm finding my hope. And also my family, my wife and my, my two daughters, we, we get up, we do a devotion and we and we're in the living room dancing to Moana and Frozen too. And we're having, we're just having a great time. So right now it's being the word of God in my family because it's been crazy. <laughs> you know, it seems like 2020 just rolled over to 2021. Um, but yeah, God is still good and he, he's still blessing. He's still coming through. Yeah, that's good to hear you say that too, because um, like for me personally, the pandemic and everything really didn't hit me until like December. But I had I had been enjoying it, like enjoying the time, enjoying the peace. Um, I mean, I, so I'm blessed to not have been affected by the, the worst parts of it. But I think um, overall, like it's still been a blessing. Gotcha. Yeah, it, it's definitely been it's definitely been a blessing. Um, and honestly, it's brought a mirror up to my face <laughs> and evaluate myself and say, you know what? Like, let's get this together. Let's get in the word of God. Let's find out who, what my identity really is outside of being an artist, outside of um, being celebrated and, and, and um, with the stages and music and everything. Um, God's just been reminding me of my sonship in him. So that's it's been an incredible blessing um, to be reminded of that. Nice. And um, I want to take it back a bit. So you're signed to Motown Gospel, right? Yeah, Motown. That's the fam. Nice. How'd that partnership come together? I don't even know. No, <laughs> man. Um, it was honestly, um, I had put my first project out, um, Stones and Giants, um, as an independent artist, and God was doing some amazing things with that project. I, I put it out. Um, I recorded that. People don't know, but I recorded that record. Like me and my friend, Mr. Dimension, he's from the UK. He lives in the states now. But I recorded that whole project in a little closet, <laughs> in a one little, um, in a one bedroom situation, and um, it was just. Yeah, like God really blessed it and um, went on tour. I was fortunate to go on tour with um, Mr. Jonathan McReynolds. Um, amazing guy, amazing talent. Um, and I don't know, every night I just went out with the mindset, I don't care who's in the audience, um, I'm coming to worship for audience on one, you know, and um, and I pray that people are blessed through this music. They find encouragement, they find hope through this music. And I was like, I'm gonna go out and go crazy. You know, I'm gonna turn up. So um, didn't know who was in the audience, didn't know, you know, I just went out there just to worship God. So I started getting phone calls and DMs and emails. Um, and I, I ended up signing with Motown Gospel, but there were multiple labels, you know, so I had to make a decision, but God gave me peace with Motown. It just felt like family. It felt right. So we, we made the decision to party with Motown and it's been such a blessing. It's been a cool ride thus far. Nice. And you mentioned uh, going on tour with Jonathan McReynolds. Which tour was that? That was a Make More Room tour. So oh, he, you know, I thought that. Yeah, and he, we did the make more room tour, so that was like, that was like the first major tour, and it was it was just it was cool, it was, it was different. And you came to New York on that, right? I believe I believe so. Did I? I can't. I did a couple of dates, but um, I had to look back. I probably did. I probably did. Nice, nice. Um, so your sound is not traditional, and um, that's actually why I love it so much because gospel goodies is not traditional at all. Like, I play all the hip hop. Um. I'm still talking about Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um, so how would you um how would you describe your sound? Woo! Um <laughs> it's a gumbo. Um it's a gumbo. I really want I want to make music for the church and I want to make music for the person for the unchurched, the seeker, the person that's never opened up the word of God, never walked in church. Um and people that live everyday life. You know, I, I love, I grew up on Commission. I grew up on Kurt Franklin and all these people and they're great. I still listen to those songs today. But then for me personally, there were times on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm like, ah, <laughs> like, what's, I, I need to listen to something else, you know? Um, and then I wasn't that suited and booted type person to wear a three-piece suit and this and that. And 
do all the vocal acrobatics and all the runs and everything. I wasn't that person, but I was like, man, there's a whole generation of people like me that want some 808s in a song that want some some music that's kind of more, like more relatable. Um, because yeah, like it's not Sunday morning for me every day. You know, we, we all go through some real life stuff. So I really want to make music um, for that person that may not even know Christ. And they say, you know what, hold on, this, this, this beat goes crazy and um uh, they get the message because i honestly believe that music is the only thing that doesn't need permission from your brain to get into your spirit you know what i'm saying like i can eat broccoli spit it out and be like this is nasty i hate squash to this day but um i hear a song that i'm like eh, i don't know but two hours later i'm singing it in the shower fam yeah you know what I'm so um i honestly believe i, I want to create music to where they hear it and they're like, man, it catches them. And they're like, oh man, this is good. They don't even realize that it's encouraging them, it's healing them, it's helping them, it's giving them hope and leading them to God. And um, later they're singing these songs and it's filling them with all all this, all this spirit, all this hope, man, all this Jesus. So I'm I'm grateful for the songs that God has given me for this generation. Nice. Um, and I love how you mentioned that too for this generation. I feel like um it's getting well, it's definitely it's here, it's easier. Um, but I'll say like over the past seven years, like just watching all of, I guess, inspirational entertainment kind of shift has yeah. been really interesting because it's like, um, like even for gospel goodies, um, it's so unconventional, but <laughs> it's like, how do you, like, how are you, I guess, how do you find the comfortability um, of stepping out against what, like, I guess the tradition is? Honestly, I was scared to do it for so long because I didn't feel like it would be embraced. Um, but when i realized that there there are souls at stake you know there are real people that need like honestly if i can be real um they're not going to listen somebody some of our generation they're not going to listen to what their mom and dad got to say anymore what they passed what they what they you know home church pastor got to say anymore and god has allowed me to be a mouthpiece he's allowed me to be a vessel to to be able to engage this culture you know what i'm saying and um I had to look at it like that, man. There, there's too many people. There's so many souls at stake. There's so many people falling off. You know what I'm saying? Like my generation, they were like, yo, as soon as I turned 18, you can't drag me to church no more. I'm out. <laughs> like, bye. But honestly, the music that God has given me is keeping them engaged and giving them hope and saying, okay, there's another way. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the gospel's still there. The purity of the gospel's still there. I'm, I'm not diluting it down. It's still there. I'm just making it relatable. I mean, Jesus did that. Jesus did that when he did went with the parables. You know what I'm saying? Like he's God wrapped in flesh. He could have used everything above their head. You know what I'm saying? He could have used all these metaphors, that, like everything that was like, cause he, his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways are way beyond our ways. He could have used everything that could have went above their head, but he used culture. He used what they were going through. He used all their politics, all this stuff to, to bring it down to their level so they can understand, you know what I'm saying? The word of God. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make things relatable, trying to make the word of God understand um, understandable, you know, for my culture. So when they when they when they listen to it, it isn't just going over the head. They're grabbing it, it's instilled in them, and they're living it out. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I, I love about this music. I love what God is doing with this generation and the music that's coming out. Yeah, I love to hear it because it's like you kind of gotta meet people where they are too, um, and people are not. Um, like the whole choir thing is not for everybody. So that's really awesome. God bless them. I love them. Um, yeah. <laughs> some people, they want to dance. They want to Millie rock a little bit, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, there's this song by um, Jordan Armstrong. I love it's it. Called, oh, what is the song called? I don't know. I forget what the song is called, but I just tested my friend one time. Um, and it reminds me of the song, um, Back That Thing Up. I think um, it's like a similar beat. I forget the song name, but is it a new one that just came out? No, this is maybe like two or three years old. Because I I, I love all his records, so um, <laughs> it, see, I have to hear it. I have to hear it. Oh, I forget the name, but it was like it was it was literally like what you just described, though, like that bring them in through the beat, and bring then they realize what they're really listening to. Man, I, I talked to a producer the other day, and he said it's my job as a producer to create amazing arrows for you to sh for you to shoot them you know what i'm saying and i'm like people they're not going to hear they're not going to even try to listen to what i have to say about jesus you know what i'm saying like they don't care who i'm just a regular person but when they hear the quality they hear the music and it grabs them they're like oh this is good hold on i need to i, I need to research this person who's this person and they talk to me 
and now like it's an open like their, their hearts are open you know what i'm saying they heard the music their hearts are open and now i get to share G. yeah what's good you know so um that's that's the cool thing about music and the cool thing about again the music that's coming out i think it's engaging culture and it's opening people up um to, to receive so yeah yeah and speaking of receiving your song you get the glory um hey! We've been playing that a lot on gospel goodies in our, so we still actually, even though I don't like calling you new artists, we still do play it in our new music hour, like pretty much every Sunday um, around 10 o'clock. And um, I want to know like, what, what what space were you in when you created that song? Ooh, um, I was heavy. I was heavy. Um, I was going through life <laughs> like everyone else. And I was also getting phone calls from friends of mine that was going through life. And I'm carrying my weight. I'm trying to carry their weight. And I'm like, yo, God, what are you doing? I had a friend call me. He said, man, my mom just got diagnosed with cancer. And um, and this woman, she's a praying worship. She's a worshiper. I'm like, God, she's one of your favorites. What's up? You know, I'm like, why? Um, but I was, I had so much heaviness going on. I remember going to, going to my piano and I started playing those three chords. It was just, it was simple. Nothing crazy, just three chords. And I, I tears start filling my eyes. And I felt this heaviness because at, at the time 2020 was really getting to us you know what i'm saying the injustices and um um covid all this stuff going on the pandemic and um i honestly if i can be real i was i started complaining a lot it's like god what are you doing like you gotta stop this come, come and see about us what's up but then i have to change my perspective i have to change my prayer and it was like god you know what i'm not going to complain anymore god you get the glory no matter what happens no matter what i go through even if it doesn't pan out how i want it to you get the glory from this and I started writing this song and I'm just bawling. I am crying. And my wife and kids are at the table, dinner's ready. She's like, babe, you're it. And she looks at me. She's like, all right, now go ahead, finish that. <laughs> finish that song. And I saw, to this day, I'm grateful she lets me let me finish that song. But I ended up writing that song, um, and I think in a couple of hours. And I sent it to my label and they were like, wow, wow. And I was like, oh man, because the song had already ministered to me. But then like going into, so I, I, I apologize. I wrote that song at the end of 2019, not knowing that 2020 was going to be crazy. So that song really helped me through the year because I didn't know if I would need those lyrics. You know, I'm listening to that song crying like, God, you get the glory, God, please. And it was crazy, but that's kind of an anthem for me right now. Nice. And um, so you're a husband, you're a girl dad. Um, how do you maintain like your deepest self uh, in family and music? Woo, um, that's a good question. Um, honestly, again, I'm constantly finding out who I am in Christ through the word of God. You know what I'm saying? Like my identity, who my true identity in Christ, but then also asking God those questions like, and asking him, how, how do I be a, how, how do I navigate being a husband? How do I be a great father? You know, and he's given me and showing me how to do so through his word. That's the only way because I suck. <laughs> I suck without Jesus. I suck without the word of God. And again, I, <laughs> the word of God, people just look at it as words about God. The word of God is God's words. You know, it's him. So he's teaching me how to navigate, how to do this, how to find balance, how to, um, how to just be a husband and how to be a man, how to be, how, how to be a disciple, how to serve well. So, um, that's, that's how, honestly. Nice. And it looks like you just moved to Charlotte too. Uh, yeah. here, what, what prompted that move? Oh yeah, God, God, um, led us out here. Um, God just let us. He was like, "Go, go to Charlotte." And uh, my wife was just waking up, praying, seeking God, fasting, and um, she had a dream that we live in Charlotte, and she just shook, just you know, shook it off, whatever. She had another dream, and um, she was like, "Babe, I think God is leading us to Charlotte." I'm like, "Charlotte, Charlotte." Like nobody just wakes up like, oh, we about to go to Charlotte. Yeah, turn up. No, <laughs> I was like Charlotte. Um, it's a beautiful place, but it was it was just crazy how she she was like, I feel, I just feel bled, you know. And and I prayed, God gave me this crazy piece. He's like, yeah, Charlotte. It's like God, that doesn't make sense. And that's God usually does that. <laughs> He's like, just go, and I'm, it makes sense later. You'll see. Um, but we prayed together. God gave gave us peace, and we just packed our family up. We packed everything up. Um, got a got a blessing from my pastor, our, our leadership. They said, "Hey, go. We're supporting you. Go and see what God has for you." And um, that's a big thing. We want to make sure we're submissive under authority. Um, but God released us. We came out here, and the favor of God that's been out here has been bananas. It's been crazy, um, and I really feel at peace that yeah, God God called us out here. So yeah. Nice. And um, so you 
Yeah. What kind of doors has it opened for you? Oh, see, you want to know a lot. See, I see you, you're good. Um, I, I won't go into detail. Um, you'll see soon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> God has given us a, a crazy amount of peace and mm -hmm. uh, even unity in our family. Um, of course, when we were in Texas, we were four minutes down the street from our family. And it was great, you know, we, we, we need to drop the kids off. Here you go. Let's go ahead and have a um, date night or whatnot. But we are here together. But we don't be out here. It's just us. So it's, it's, it's making our family unit, the trailer tribe, like really, really strong. And it's giving us peace. We There's nobody pulling on us. It's just, it's just, we're just chilling, man, enjoying one another. Uh, and we may, you know, um, we may have challenges mm -hmm. that they may come. But honestly, right now we are just resting in the promises of God, resting in the favor, resting in his peace and um, enjoying it, honestly. Nice. Love to hear it. Um, well, it's Black History Month. What's it? February 22nd. Black History Month is almost over. But um, I saw a post on your Instagram that was really like profound, if that's the word I can use. Um, but you were talking about um, how you're learning how to embrace your blackness and like blackness is so beautiful and I love seeing people um, like really get not get into it, but like really own it and be proud of it because for so long we were taught to just kind of hate ourselves. So how did, um, like, what was that process like for you coming to that realization? Um, again, it was the word of God because for so long I, I grew up, I, oh, you know, and I, I never forget one of the first days I went to the school. Um, I went to sleep the night before with gum in my um, gum in my mouth and it ended up getting my little afro. I'm bald now. Hey man, <laughs> thank God for the baldness. But um, I had a little fro and the gum got in my hair. My mom had to get it out. And the next day, um, I remember going to school and I had a little gum left, whatever. And the kids touched my hair and they were like, oh, it feels like carpet, da 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 da. And uh, I got talked about, I'm, I'm one of the only black kids at the school at the time. And um, they were like, um, they'd say stuff like, you look like a shadow, this and that. It's just crazy. So I kind of grew up with this complex that, or this mindset that black was less than. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo. And when I grew up, and it was, it wasn't even just the culture start changing. It was the word of God that reminded me that I am beautiful. I made in His image. He loves me. You know what I'm saying? That's all I needed. And I didn't, I didn't learn that until the age of 16, 17. And I still, I was still trying to. You know what I'm saying? Embrace because there was so many years of me getting picked on for it, something that was out of my control. You know what I'm saying? Something that God made beautiful. You know, and and sometimes when people say stuff like, "Oh," and they may have the purest hearts when they say this, like, "I wish we were all color. I wish we were colorblind so we could." No, like <laughs> that doesn't. No, I'm glad we're not colorblind. I'm I'm glad that God made us different for a reason. If yeah. He wanted to look the same, He would have made us look the same. But He made us look different for a reason. He it reminds us that we all need each other. You know what I'm saying? The life life would be so boring if it was just one. Yeah, people, just one type. You know. Um, but again, I'm grateful for the Word of God and also my mother and my grandmother teaching me that I'm beautiful, like affirming me. Let me know that I made his image, and and then uh, my wife, you know, coming coming behind that, like, yo, I love you, husband. You're you're so beautiful to me. I love your baldness. I love your melon. I love everything. And um, and my my, my wife is black, but she's um she's of a lighter, fair skin, you know. So, but it's like to have these people just affirm you and remind you who you are is it's a beautiful thing. And I just feel the love of, you. I hear the love of God in that. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying not to cry right now. Oh my goodness. Um, but we just need to be reminded. Like God made us, he created us, and he didn't mess up when he did it. He was so intentional about the melanin. You know, he was so intentional about how different he made us all. And, and I'm grateful to be a black man. I'm proud to be a black man. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we salute you here on Gospel Goodies, Black Man. You are beautiful. Black is beautiful. Come on. Come on now. You almost got me. almost had a tear come out of me. <laughs> Um, well, before I let you go, we like to play a game called This or That. So I'm going to give you two options um, and you pick your preference. Ready? Go for it. All right. So the first one, um, since it's snowing here, let's go for snow snow or rain. Ooh, snow. I'm, I'm with snow. No? Yeah. All right. Um, cake or pie? I'm a brownie guy, but I'm going to go... If it's sweet potato, I'm gonna go with pie. I'm gonna go. With, mm, I'm gonna go with pie today. The pie today. Yeah, I'm gonna go with pie today. Brownie pie. Yeah. 
brownies brownies are a good option you know i don't classify that well i mean brownies like cakey right but it would take right would it be in cake more cake yeah so well mm -hmm. we picking brownie today <laughs> <laughs> all right brownie today um iphone or android iphone <laughs> come on <laughs> All right, football or basketball? Oh, it cut out. What'd you say? Basketball all day. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, phone call or text? Phone call. You get to hear people's emotions. You get to hear them. You know, a lifeless text, emojis don't do stuff justice. You want to hear their voices. So, phone call for me. I'm the texter. Really? I dread phone calls. I need to hear I, you. I need to be like, you know what? You lying. You sound like you lying. You know, no, but um, yeah, phone call for me all day. Oh yeah, in that instance, FaceTime. Cause I okay. got. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, um, Netflix or YouTube? Ooh, I'm a big movie head, but I go Netflix. All right, doing laundry or doing dishes? Dishes. Yeah. All right, and now um. The hard one. The last one. You ready? What you want? <laughs> All right. Um, so no judgment to people watching because they're both great. But uh -huh. the Clark sisters or the Winans? Woo! The Winans. All right, that's, yeah. Yeah. All day. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, thank you so much for playing the game. Thank you for talking with us today. Um, and just taking the time out, uh, where can people follow you and keep up with everything you have going on? And what actually, before we even get to that part, um, in that, can you tell people what we can expect from you this year too? Oh yes. New music coming soon. Oh, socks off cause it's blessing me, but new music coming real, real soon. Um, maybe some more visuals. Um, yeah, it's some other stuff too. We won't get into, but you, you'll know, you'll know. Um, but it's a, a lot of major things happening. A lot of major, th major things happening this year. So, yeah. Awesome. And where can people follow you to uh, keep up with it all? Yeah, so when it comes to my music, um, you anywhere you listen to music digitally, um, Spotify, uh, um, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, you can hear, I have Stones and Giants, my older album, and my newest album, The Unknown. You can hear my music anywhere. You listen to music, and then keep keeping up with me, it's Jonathan Trailer on Instagram, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. T R A Y L O R, Jonathan Trailer everywhere. Um, my Twitter is J Trailer Music. Sorry about that. And um, my website, if you, it's a one stop shop, Jonathan Trailer Music.com. You can pick up merch, you can hear the music, all that good stuff. So, yeah.